Nolan Smith, man, good to see you. Uh, you are already uh, putting on a show, if you will. I just, I just saw you over at the podium doing your thing. Uh, what's this process been like for you, and, and what do you want to get out of this combine process? Um, just to let everyone know I didn't die. I'm still that same athletic kid. Um, I had a, a minor injury. I promise you, if I could have still played, if I could have did anything to be out there with my boys, I would have did it. Um, but I just want to let people know that I'm just an athletic kid, and I'm here to work. I bring my hard hat and pail every day. I did it when I was hurt, and I'm going to do it really when I'm healthy. Well, everybody knows what kind of player you are and what kind of athlete you are. One service had you as the 20th best prospect of all time coming out of high school. What kind of show are you going to put on here in Indianapolis Man, in those drills? All I'm going to say is the camera, the camera better be watching, and I better – this is my time to showcase my skills for the NFL Combine, and I promise you this is the biggest interview of your life. And I tell people, you work all your life to get to this point, and when you get here, it's just that's so real. Like, you just don't believe in it, and I just can't wait to go out there and run. This is something that I watched as a kid. Like, growing up, every high school football player put on the NFL Combine when it came on, and Work and I watched I watched Von Miller run. I watched Von Miller do drills and stuff, and just to see how far just when he came in, he was a linebacker. Mm. Now we have a whole edge group just right. because of him. Right. Like I tell people, like you gotta acknowledge people that affect the game for us. That's interesting because well, first of all, to be clear, so you're fully healed from the pack. You're yeah, back. I'm I'm back. I won't be doing certain things just for safety precautions okay. and just in case I slip and fall. I'm still really. 13 weeks out of surgery. Yeah. And um, I'm really good, man. I got my chicken wing back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what aren't you going to be doing? And what will you be doing? Um, I won't be. I'll be doing the 40, the vertical. Okay. I'll be doing the broad jump. And um, I'll be doing all the drill work. Gotcha. So um, I'm just But ready. no bench. Yeah. No, no yeah. bench. No, yeah. I, um, I probably won't even bench at my pro day. Um, my tape for far strong. People know my tape speak for itself. Hopefully they turn the tape on and believe that I'm strong. If somebody for whatever reason, was not familiar with Nolan Smith's body of work in Athens. If you had if you had to give them one tape to watch, what game would that be? Oh, turn on South Carolina my junior year. Okay. That was that was the tape to watch. But, man, really just any game. Mm -hmm. I go out there and play every game like it's my last play. So that's why I was just so grateful when, you know, when my injury came and it was my time to leave Georgia. I, I cried just because I wanted to win. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to play with my guys, and I just didn't want to get hurt. But... I play, and anybody tell you that, man, I play balls to the wall every play, and that's how you play the game. You never know when your last play comes. And you're approaching the combine uh, that way. I just want to go back to that for a second because what, what struck me about your commentary on these drills and this process is nowadays there's a lot of conversation about the usefulness of this event. Uh, there's a lot of players who feel like, hey, you know, turn on the film. I don't need to do certain things. But it's like somebody of your stature, and not just because you're hurt, it sounds like you're really embracing every step of this process and even what this event represents from a historic standpoint. Yeah, I just, you know, you hear the work. And um, as a guy, I learned that Georgia at hard work works. You know, some people don't do a lot of things just because, like my dog JC, he just came off a whole 15-game season. Yeah. Some guys didn't play 15 games. Yeah. You know, my dog JC played 15 games, and he may go out there and not showcase his talents for real because he's not 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and... I just believe, you know, I can't wait to do it. You know, I've been, I've wanted to do this since I was a kid, and I take the process the right way. Yeah. And I never back down from a challenge. And, you know, the long, hard way may be the best way for some people, and yeah. I feel like the long, hard way is the best way for me. Amen. Um, you said you cried when you got hurt. Take me back to that moment and what was going through your mind. Man, you it was just, injury. it was emotional just because I love the game. Man, and I'm just a kid. I begged my mom to play this since I was four. And she was like, you're not going to go out because my mom wanted me to be intelligent. You know, I'm, I graduated with my math degree. And she was like, you're not going to go out there and play that violent game and stuff like that and hurt yourself. And I just begged her since I was a little boy, I want to play football. I want to play football. I want to be a head hunter. I want to go out there and hit. And that's what I love to do, man. I love to go out there and hit. And when my injury happened, I just had to take a step back. Yeah. And then I say, man. Honestly, and within that hour after they told me, I sat in my car and Coach Smart blew my phone up. He called me because his, his office sees everything. Like, his, he looks down and he see that I went to my car and I was like, bro, I want to get another MRI. I want to get an x-ray. What can we do? Do you think the tendon to heal on its own? Um, after the surgery, they told me 
six weeks you'll be healed. And I said, okay, bet. So week seven, I'm playing, right? Yeah. And they said, uh, it don't work like that. You'll be weak. And I'll be like, but I have a left side, so I'll be good. And it was just, I tried to go back and forth with them. Mr. Ron wasn't having it. He was like, no, no, no. He kept just telling me mm -hmm. no. And Coach Smart told me, you know, I need the team and the team needs me. Mm -hmm. And I really needed them more. Like, I was down on myself and I just be like, how you want to be remembered at Georgia? You a senior and stuff like that. And I just try to affect everybody every day. And we saw you motivating, coaching, a presence on the sideline. So you stepped back, but you didn't step away from the team. What does that say about you that you could have just gone to rehab and said, all right, it's been real. I'm preparing for the draft, but you stayed and finished. Man, I'm just one person that's going to finish the drill no matter what. I don't, I don't take the easy way out of things. I didn't have the, I didn't have it easy growing up. I didn't have an easy way in life. I didn't know my father and all those things, but those are just excuses. You know, you can only get out of life what you put in there. And what did your mom mean to you? Man, my mom, my everything, man. I love my mama. She raised, she not only raised a man of character, but she I also shout out to my brothers. We all men of character. My brother is about to go to Mercer for engineering school, and he, he he's really intelligent. He think he's smarter than me. I tell him, I just because I play football, you're not smarter than me, so don't think that. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, man. You kind of just uh, put me to shame just now because and I hate to say this in front of you, but. When I got to college, and I was good at math in high school, like I took AP calculus up through high school. When I got to college, I took one math class. I took the bare minimum. I'm sitting next to a math major. Yeah. All I mean, say, bro, like. Count three was easy, man. Count three was easy. Um, we Differential equations, you know, all those type of things. And most people don't even know what we're talking about, honestly. Um, I only know differential equations from Wakanda forever. Because really? the, the little girl built a machine. Was yeah, and she said differential <laughs> equations and stuff like that. And they, they made her seem really smart, but it's way more complicated than what they was making it look like on Marvel. They really, like, simpled it down. But, yeah. Um, a couple of those classes, man, were really good. I had a lot of professors. Dr. Royal, she helped me. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to put in extra work, and I was willing to do that. It's not like, you know, I first got everything off the muscle, but I feel like men and women, a lot of numbers don't. And, like, when I did equations, it was almost like football. Like, if I keep practicing and practicing and learning how to manipulate this equation and make it work for me and my sense of way, that's why I feel like, you know, math was just kind of like my calling. Because of the challenge, is that what attracted you to it, or what, what was well, it? Well, the, the challenge, and also you got to see it from a different view. You got to look at it different. You know, you got to really think, manipulate equations, switch x's and y's on the other side. You have different variables. You can use different tricks. I always use um. The, a lot of people don't even know, but the quadratic formula will always help you, especially in the higher levels in math. For Anything, example, like you can break down if you got polynomials and stuff like that in mm -hmm. the graph and stuff, you can break those down into use a quadratic formula, find this and different curves and stuff like that. But I don't want to talk because people... You know not, you might as well be speaking another language. I, I remember some of this. It's been about 20-something years since I did any of this. But it's just fascinating, man, because it's like people talk about the, the interview process at the Combine and in general and what, pe what teams are, are looking for trying to get to know a guy. It's almost like your resume and your body of work is all the statements you need at this point. Like, if they got any questions, look at the kid that stayed with the team after he got hurt. Look at the kid that was a math major at Georgia. Look at the kid that's got his degree. Look at the kid who was a leader on that team. How did you get to be a leader on that in that locker room? Man, I just, my body of work, man, I worked hard. I worked really hard, and guys saw that, guys understood that. And then when I asked guys to do more, it wasn't like, i do it with you. I wasn't telling you, hey, man, do another rep. It was like, come on, four, do another rep with you. You ain't finished. Let's finish together. Or if you down, come lean on four. Like, those are just my sayings that I always try to pick people up, yeah. help guys out, man, because when you're freshman year, man, when you come out there and run 14 gases and a person that's been doing it for four years, he going to be, he going to put his hands on his knees. I don't care. But it's your job as a man to pick another brother up or pick another man up. And I always did that. And my mom raised me like that. And um, just the brotherhood of football, like, you know, you should be able to trust that person that's next to you. And, you know, they always have your good intention. Commitment's always been a part of your story. Early commitment to Georgia, stay committed to Georgia. As we've talked about, stay committed through the end of your senior season at Georgia. Um, when you look back and you think about 
all the, the the hype, the deserved hype, and the attention that came with you signing with Georgia. We talked about you being one of the greatest, highest rated prospects of all time. To how you finished, how would you describe uh, and look back at your legacy in Athens? Because you definitely do have a legacy there. Oh um, man, me me and Robert Bill, I say the two outside linebackers that that did it, the Natty and. I just look back on it and be like, wow, you know, it was it was a journey and it was a process, but that's just something I never forget. And just thank you to Coach Smart. Thank yeah. you to Coach Deribe, man. Coach Deribe was like towards, and that was towards the end of my career. Coach Deribe really came in and just helped me mold it, the little things and the leadership. And when Coach Deribe first came in, he sat me down and he said, I'm going to demand a lot from you just because – you're, you're the leader of the team, and I have to set the standard. And I said, Coach, that's what you're here for. Mm. Like, you can demand a lot from me. And it was my senior year, and that's just why I got so emotional when I got hurt because he was demanding a lot from me, and it was a challenge every day, and he didn't let me down. Mm. And he made me work every day, and he just brought that, that extra gear to me. And I just wanted to let him know, like, he was also a part of my journey. And Coach Deribe, Coach Smart, man, Coach Schumann, Coach Lanny, um, those, they really affected my life, and they were a part of my legacy. And I just want to be remembered as just a guy that worked hard. So put on the tape. People know the the player that they're going to get. Do their research, do their homework. They know the type of teammate and leader they're going to get. What type of person is whatever whatever organization drafts you, what type of person is that community going to get? What what do you want to be uh, to that Man, entire you, so, fan base? I know the first thing I did with NIL is um, I did a kids camp in Savannah. Savannah, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's what I really – I set a kids camp in Savannah, and wherever I go, I'm going to do a kids camp there. I try to affect kids because I was one of those kids. Um, my coach was my father figure. My father was incarcerated for 13 years, and sometimes, you know, if – I didn't eat at the park. I wasn't going to eat because my mama had to go to work and I couldn't really cook for myself. I was with my grandma. My grandma had to work. So I just, they're going to get a guy that just understands the less privileges of kids and um, to let them know they're not alone. I always want to let kids know that, you know, no matter how you start in life, it's about how you finish. Yeah. And um, that's what my mom taught me. And she worked really hard her whole life. That's why she wasn't there. And the time what she did she came, do? Um, she worked at Enmark at the time, and she still worked at South Coast Medical Building. And um, that's my dream, to retire my mom. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what do you want to do with this math degree? Man, I want to work with stocks and bonds. I want to work with numbers. Um, my, my dream in my life was to work on Wall Street. I wanted to put on a suit every day and walk on Wall Street in New York. And I just, I'm from small town Savannah, so that was, like, big to me. And yeah. I thought of people, when they say the big city, I thought of Atlanta. When people <laughs> said the big city or the Big Apple or whatever, they, I thought of Atlanta. And then I found out about New York and Wall Street, and I realized Wall Street made the world go round. Yeah. When the Great Depression hit, most people don't know they was – when Wall Street goes down, that's when the Great Depression hit. That's when our mm -hmm. money shortage. That's when the food shortage. That's when all the things started happening. And um, I just wanted to be one of those real guys on Wall Street, like actual clean cut and do my job the right way so something like not for like the Great Depression doesn't happen. Well, listen, man, whatever city that you go to, they're getting a star. Uh, man, teams going to fall in love with you. I could tell <laughs> if they haven't already. Nolan Smith, man, we appreciate you. Thank, Thank you so you, much man. for kicking you take it with care. me. Take care. Yes, right. sir. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.